Okay, uh, this is just a, a very quick part two. Um, so this is one of my other animations, um, and this one's full color, well, mostly full color. Um, and what I did here, this is just going to be an example of having like a mostly static image with some moving parts. Uh, this is the animation if you play it. Uh, it's a looping animation, and you can see that all my different layers and different parts of the body have their own animation folders. Um, and within each of those folders, I'll use the smile as an example. Uh, you can see in the other animation we had layers and they labeled one, two, three, four. Uh, and you can do the same with folders. You can make folders and they'll be labeled one, one A, two. And within that folder, then each of those uh, each of those individual folders act as their own frame, and you can have as much stuff in it as you want. So I have the line and the color there too. So that's a um, a little better if you want to work on like a full color animation, so that you can have folders for each one. I also wanted to show you tweening. So here is. Um, one of the things that I've made for like a storyboard where I had the background the characters move in different directions just a uh, basic side by side uh, and this is what it looks like it's not as choppy as that when you export it but it is choppier when in the program itself you can see here on the timeline that there's these um, these diamonds and those are what you use to keyframe two positions. Uh, so it's very simple to pan like that. Um, and the way that you make these diamonds appear, these keyframes, uh, is this the add keyframe and delete keyframe. So um, what I did here, I believe I just uh, when you click on it, it doesn't have that option available at first, so you have to click Enable Keyframes on this layer. Um, it's this button right here. Um, once you click on that, then the button will appear, and then you can click Add Keyframe. Let me zoom out so that you can see what happens. When you click Add Keyframe, that keyframe appears. And then you can go wherever on the timeline you need and add another keyframe. And then you can move the the object however you want. And it will move that object accordingly. It was already tween so it kind of looks a little uh, weirder, but maybe if I just um, take this out of here. Um, so Yes, now you can see that it moves in that particular way. Slightly different, but you just saw me like move the the thing out of a certain folder. That is actually called a camera folder and that will create a camera layer for um, moving your camera. And so this is what this next next example is. Here's another. I have a lot of unfinished projects, I'm sorry. Uh, this is another thing I've done. It's a short little PV that I was making. But if I play it out, it has about nine images here, so. You can see that the camera moves and it's panning up and down. Um, so that's how the camera movement works. It's, again, it's going to be smoother once um, you actually export it. What I did here, and you can see I have a bunch of layers, but they're not visible here, and that's because I put them all into a camera layer. Uh, so you go to Animation, New Animation Layer, and then 2D Camera Folder, and that will create a camera layer. And you can see a blue binding box shows up. You can drag whatever stuff you want to be moved on the camera 
into that layer. And what that does is that it creates um, a camera for you to edit and crop however you want. Um, so it this is useful for like drawing outside of this frame because as you can see this file is a lot bigger than the what the frame will look like and I just drew a full body but instead of like uh, instead of adding to the image I just panned up on a bigger image um, and the way I did that is that I, I put it into a camera layer and then I uh, just like with the keyframes made enabled keyframes on the camera layer I did it on the wrong layer uh, once you put your image, your key, your animation folder into the camera layer, then you can enable the keyframes and then add keyframes however you please. Uh, and then you can move it around and you'll see, if I move it like this, you can see that there's a path that's drawn from the original starting point and you can watch how the camera moves. I'm going to set the camera display mode on the field guides, show field guides, and then you'll see this is how I cropped the things. Uh, you can see that the camera starts down at the bottom here and then it works its way up uh, from how I, that's how I uh, arranged the camera in order to do the panning. So that's just about all I wanted to show you. I hope it, I hope it helps.